A viewer named Kuta Madre asked the following question. Couldn't you fetch navigation items from strap inside navigation component to avoid prop drilling? The answer to that question is technically you could, but you couldn't do it with using uh, something like get server side props. Because get server side props wouldn't work in a regular component like that, like your navigation component. So, instead of that, if you want to avoid prop drilling, you could do something like using context API uh, to pass that data to your component without prop drilling. And that is exactly what we are going to be doing in this episode. And also, uh, I'm going to show you how you can manage the state of your application or website uh, using also context API. I already covered the context API in my React 2020 series, so if you don't know anything about it, please check that video out, because in this video we are going to be moving fast along, I'm not going to explain everything we are doing, because uh, context API is a feature of React that we already covered. So if you don't know anything about it, please just check out that video. First of all, I'm going to create a context for my application or my website, uh, and I'm going to do it inside of a context directory. So I'm going to create a context directory. And inside of that directory, I'm going to create my first context, and that context is going to be called header context. So in our header context.js file, I'm just going to define my context so that I can use it throughout the application when I need to. So you just import create context from React, uh, you define a variable called header context and you just do header context and that's it, you export it. Uh, save this, now we have our header context. Next thing we need to do, we need to create a context wrapper. So that is going to be a component that we are going to wrap around other components and all the components that are inside of it are going to uh, be able to use the data from our context. Now inside of our components directory, I'm going to create a new file and I'm going to call it context wrapper. Context wrapper.js of course. And in it, first I'm going to import header context. Then I'm going to import use state from React. We also covered that in the React 2020 series, so check that out if you don't know what's going on here. Next thing, we are just going to create a context wrapper function, and then I'm just going to export it. And as you can see, our context wrapper function is expecting children and navigation. We are going to pass navigation to our context wrapper, so we are expecting that. Uh, next thing I wanna do, I wanna define a variable called menu items that we are going to uh, use as our state. Next, I'm just going to return context provider and inside it, I'm going to have children, uh, which are going to be all of the components that are uh, inside of our context wrapper. So since this is a header context and we are going to uh, wrap that context around the header component, uh, the children in this case would be just header component. But if you are wrapping that context context wrapper around multiple components, then they are represented by these children. So the next thing and the last thing that we need to do uh, is we need to set the value of this provider to be menu items. And you can inside of that value prop add whatever other values that you need uh, and that you are getting from your state. So we are defining our state by using this use state and we are going to pass in the navigation to our context wrapper. So the menu item state of our application is going to be those navigation items, as you will see. So first of all, let's just add this value right here. We are passing in an object that is uh, in this case, just going to contain menu items. Great, so now our context wrapper is ready. And now we are going to go to our app.js and wrap that context around our header component. So now in our app.js file, we are just going to import context wrapper from components context wrapper. And now we are going to wrap that context wrapper around this header navigation component. Okay, so we are wrapping our uh, context wrapper around it. Next thing, uh, I'm just going to actually 
just cut this out and paste it right here. So we are passing the navigation to our context wrapper instead of header. So we are not doing any prop drilling right here. We are just passing navigation to uh, our context wrapper. Okay, save this. Now we can go to our uh, header.js file because we are accepting navigation right here. So we don't need that anymore. And also, as you can see here, we are calling the navigation component. So I'm just going to remove navigation from it also because we are not doing prop drilling. Save this. And now we are going to implement that context uh, on our navigation JS. So currently our application is probably not working if we check it out. And as you can see, we are getting a uh, cannot read property map of un unidentified because uh, the our navigation component currently isn't getting any navigation items that it, it can look through. So we are just going to remove navigation from our navigation component because we don't even need that anymore. And instead of that, we are going to be using context to get the data of our menu items. Now we are going to import use context hook and also header context from our context header context. Okay. Uh, next thing we want to use this use context hook to get the data that we need so that we can loop through our menu items. And to do that, we are just going to say, so const, we are destructuring menu items from use context header context. And inside of that header context, we are getting uh, these values right here. So our navigation that we are calling menu items. Okay. And now instead of this navigation that, that map right here, we can just write menu items. Okay. Save this. And that's it. Uh, now our application should be working. And as you can see, it does. And all of our navigations are still here. And they work as expected. And as you can see, oh, we got our navigation items this way, and we didn't have to do any prop drilling. So the next thing we are going to be doing is I'm going to try to create a, just a simple state, just one button, and I'm just going to show you how you can use that inside of your Next.js application. So we are going to create a button that is going to change the color of our navigation depending if you click on it. So it's actually going to toggle it. So we are going to create a button called uh, toggle navigation color button and we are going to create it inside of our components folder. So toggle navigation color button.js. Inside it, I'm just going to import header context from context header context. And of course use context because we are going to be needing it so that we can set the state. Uh, this time, not just read the state, but also set our state. And we are going to create that state inside of our context wrapper.js. So if we go right here, we can just define uh, with use state color and toggle color. So color is going is going to be the uh, true or false value of our of our color, and toggle color is going to be the function that is going to set our color. So let's just do this, and we are setting the first state of it to be true. Of course, we need to pass this color and toggle color function to the value of our context provider. Okay, so save this. And now in our toggle navigation color button, we can use context to get the color and also to get the function for toggling the color. So we are going to add a button right here. And that button is going to toggle the color. And what that means is it's just going to when somebody clicks on it, set the color to be not true or not false. So it's going to set it to the opposite value of what it currently is. So that's why we are doing this uh, exclamation point color. And we are using the toggle color function to do that. And of course, the button just says toggle navigation color. Great, save this. Now we need to import that button inside of our header. Like this. And we are just going to put it below the navigation like this. Okay, save this right now. And uh, if we go to our browser, we get this toggle navigation color. 
But of course, nothing is currently happening because we didn't set any actions to happen once this color changes. Uh, what we could do is we can just go to our navigation component and then we can get the color from our use context header context. We don't need to get the toggle color because we are not toggling anything in our navigation component. So we don't need that function, but we do need the uh, current state of the color. That current state is currently true, but once we run our application again, and when somebody clicks the button, it's going to alternate between true or false. And to change the color, we are going to pass the color to our navigation styled component, which is if you watch the video about using emotion and CSS and JS, be sure to watch that video uh, to know what exactly we are doing here. So I'm just going to pass that color to our navigation style component. And inside of our CSS, we can access it and change the color of the text of our menu items right here. And you would just do it like this. So we are just saying, uh, get the props. If the props color, props color is true, then the text of our menu items is going to be blue. Otherwise it's going to be black. And in this way, we are manipulating the state of our application or our website. Save this and check it out if it works. So if I click this right now, as you can see, the color of this text changes. If I click it again, it changes to blue. And we didn't have to do any prop drilling to make all of this happen. All of the changes to the state uh, are not handled by our individual components, but they are all handled inside this context wrapper.js. So this has been it for this video. Everything we did here will be available for you on GitHub. The link will be in the description below. And as always, thank you guys for watching and I will see you in the next one.